like many other cities across the world, Glasgow today had its protest against Israel's slaughter of the innocents and demanding a ceasefire in Gaza. There were powerful speeches from the stage in Glasgow's George Square, including... I've lost contact with my family for over one week ago. It wasn't actually yesterday only. And this is the case for many of the Palestinians who are living here in Glasgow. We don't know if our families, they will make it or not. Uh, uh, we don't know if they are still alive. We don't know if they are injured. We don't know actually what's happening to them. Let me be clear. I stand with all the innocent people in Palestine, a people persecuted for decades, who have lived for 17 years under siege and 56 years under occupation. I want you to know that I have never had so many emails as I have had over these past two weeks. People in Glasgow demanding a ceasefire. People in Glasgow demanding the end to this awful, awful, appalling, situation through the deaths of babies and children and mothers who just happen to be in their own place as missiles rain down upon them. It shouldn't take much courage for any politician or public figure to stand right here today with all the political parties and communities to demand a ceasefire today on all sides. Right across the UK, we're told that there's a very high level of support for exactly the type of ceasefire being demanded by this demonstration. But in Scotland, there is a very demonstrable way to illustrate just how high the demand for a ceasefire is. We have SNP, MSP, whom is a USAV, calling for a ceasefire right from the get-go. Cutting off electricity, food, water, fuel supplies, to the people of Gaza is collective punishment, and it must be condemned in the strongest possible manner. International law must always, and especially when it is difficult, must be respected. The Scottish Government calls on all sides to agree to an immediate ceasefire. Added to that, we have the leader of the Scottish Labour Party. Initially, he was very reluctant to call for something called a ceasefire. Hmm, I wonder why. Just listen to this interview from earlier in the week and the contortions that Anis Sawar goes through to avoid mentioning the word ceasefire. But should there be a ceasefire? Well, I think, you know, an end to rocket fire in and out of Gaza speaks for itself. That means an end to violence. On the violence, it's really, really important to stress you need to have the immediate release of hostages, the immediate access to humanitarian assistance, an end to rocket fire into and out of Gaza, and a meaningful peace process. But it sounds like you support a ceasefire without actually using the phrase ceasefire. Well, look, I, I, I'm, I've really caught my words. I, I, I don't understand the trivialization. What the point I'm making. Politicians can talk about a ceasefire in the Middle East. You can. No, no. Why is that? Well, is that is that a labour problem? No, an end to violence, I think, speaks for itself. Ultimately, one end to violence, what the protection of human life, whether that be an Israeli life or a Palestinian life. But I think ultimately, it's peace that we want. But 24 hours later, and his problem with the word ceasefire seems to have resolved itself. And that's why we need to see the immediate release of hostages, immediate access to humanitarian supplies, food, medicine, electricity, water into Gaza, the immediate cessation of violence with an end to rocket fire into and out of Gaza. And let me be clear, that means a ceasefire right now. According to the latest opinion polls, Anas Sawar and Humza Yusuf are speaking for approximately 35% of the electorate apiece. Now, that's a staggering 70% of the Scottish population are supporting parties calling for an immediate ceasefire. But sadly, Keir Starmer, the man who's destined to be our next Prime Minister, thanks to an implosion of the Tory party, still cannot find it within himself to say the word ceasefire. What we're seeing with Keir Starmer is a clash between his own internal naked desire for power and his natural subservience to USA-Israeli economic and political power. 
Keir Starmer's march to number 10 risks being derailed by war in Gaza. Labour Party divisions over its latest stance on Israel and Hamas pose a threat to its electoral ambitions. Added to the rash of councillors and local CLP officers resigning as a result of Keir Starmer's abysmal handling of the whole Gaza crisis, we are now also seeing high-profile political figures within the party openly defying the party line, primarily Andy Burnham and Sadiq Khan. Added to this, we also have a growing number of Labour Party front benchers openly flouting his authority and calling for a ceasefire. Shehab Khan, ITV. Sadiq Khan, Andy Burnham and Anas Sarwar provided the political cover and now we're up to 12 shadow ministers who appear to have endorsed calls for a ceasefire in Gaza in direct opposition to Keir Starmer's position. Certainly adds pressure and undermines his authority. So, which of Starmer's competing impulses will win out? Will it be his own insatiable desire for power? Or will it be his obsequious, bootlicking attitude to the USA and its ally Israel? I think it will be a close run thing. Please support left wing voices on social media by liking this video and subscribing to the channel.